Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Allie and happy Friday the 13th. I was kind of back and forth on if I was going to film this or not. It's been a minute since I've done a readathon, um, and I honestly didn't think I was going to be able to pull off a readathon this month, but I couldn't pass up this one. <laughs> this is Survive the Night readathon hosted by Jess from Reading with Jess. This is from today, Friday the 13th to the 17th. So it's a pretty short readathon. The whole goal is to build a TBR for camp. Um, with different locations. Your book is based on what location and just try to survive the night. This is such a creative um, horror readathon. I am so excited for it. You can obviously read whatever you want um, and my TBR is kind of all over the place but Jess did recommend having a book for each location slash prompt because once you have your TBR with Discord, you will go ahead and go to the check-in channel and check into what location slash prompt you are currently reading for that day. Hope that your hiding spot works and that the killer doesn't visit your location that night because if they do, you did not survive and that location is now off the map. I will throw up the map. She did a lot of work uh, putting this all together. It's such a cool idea. So there, here's all the locations on the map. Um, but yeah, once the killer visits one of the locations, it's completely off the map. So I've been having a really hard time choosing. I wanted to choose cabins or the lake or, you know, like an area that like I really don't want to miss out on <laughs> because once the killer visits, it's done. You can't go there anymore even if you survived the previous night. There is 10 locations um, with 10 different different reading prompts, so I do have a TBR of 10 books. And today's photo prompt is to have your TBR together. And I wish that I could do that. I was not unable to, so I just had to post it in my stories as so, because I own some of these, others I don't own, and I have to go pick up from my library. I did put them on hold a couple weeks ago, so I think they're about ready for me. I'm probably not even going to be able to get to all of these books. I mean, realistically, 10 books in the next few days, it's a little impossible to do that, but we're going to kind of see how the TBR dwindles, so I am not going to talk about a book until I am checked in at that location, and then I will give you guys the details on what book I'm reading. But if you wanted a little visual overall for what I picked for each location, here it is. Um, we have The Cabins, which is a book set at camp. Uh, the Mess Hall, which is unscramble title to make food. I chose a book that I can unscramble my favorite food, which is sushi. <laughs> um, the Bonfire, which is a hot new release. The Lake, which is body of water on cover. The Boathouse, which is a book about travel or has some type of traveling in it. That one was a hard one for me. Um, the Amphitheater, which is multiple points of views in the story. Um, the Archery Filled, which is a book to help you stay on target with your goals, which I absolutely love and is a blessing for me. Um, the Bath House, a body part on the cover. Hiking Trail, a book cover with a view. And the Main Lodge, which is a past book club pick because Jess's book club is Sleep When I'm Dead book club. So you have to choose one that they have read in the past. I think that about covers it. You get on Discord, there's chats with everybody, and then you... Um, have to just check in to what location you're going to be at for the night and just hope that the killer doesn't come to your location. I will say here that if we are killed at our location, you can either end the readathon right there and I'm just going to kind of see how I feel. It is going to be a busy weekend for me. I'm going to go see Beetlejuice this weekend or Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I'm so excited. Um, and we have a lot of other things going on that hopefully I will be filling you guys in with soon. Things have just been kind of up in the air and we've been moving a lot of stuff around. So yeah. Um, besides that, I'm just going to see uh, what I can get to. If I'm kind of like crushing it, I'm going to keep going. Um, if I am not, but I've at least read a couple of books for this vlog, I'll probably just let the killer take me and then just leave it at that. But Jess does offer a solution if you are killed out early, and that is you have to post a photo and or a video 
of how the killer took you out. So I'll have to get a little gory, a little special effects makeup and stuff. So it's just if I have the time for that as well. I think the concept is really cool though and definitely it's gonna get me out of my comfort zone to post this to a Discord with a bunch of people I don't know. Um, but also to show you guys and I just have fun with. I just wanna have fun with this readathon. Um, and I honestly chose a lot of books that help me towards my goals of videos that I'm currently filming and doing. So you will probably see some of these or books in future videos as well. But yeah, right now I am currently doing a photo for Friday the 13th that I want to post tonight. So I got to take the photos, I which I have everything ready. I've got my knife. Um, I've got my fake blood. Wanted to do this part of it first before I get all messy. Um, but yeah. I chose the book to help me stay on my targeted goals because I have a stack of books I'm reading this week and I didn't get to all of them so I, I need to keep working on one of them so I am currently checked in at the archery film and I chose Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. It's a vampire read and I'm super excited. We actually just finished dinner a while ago and watched the new movie Abigail which was <laughs> a ride in itself but it just... It was weird to watch a vampire movie and then now I'm going to be reading a vampire book with sprints because there's also like activities that she's doing throughout this. Um, some nights it's just sprints. Other night, I think tomorrow there's like a scavenger hunt that we're going to find out about and I'm like, I hope I'm able to pull it off because like I said, we're going to be out of town tomorrow and we're going to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So I'm like, hopefully I will be able to pull off the scavenger hunt. Um, but tonight she is hosting sprints and we are on the first sprint right now. So I'm going to try to get my photos done this sprint and then maybe a little bit of reading done. Um, and then during break, I will probably, while they're talking and stuff, I will probably try to edit some of my photos just to see if I can get it posted tonight. But the whole idea of it is hopefully going to be, um, something that I can use even if I do get killed off early. I'm trying to plan ahead of time, but also have a cool post for Friday the 13th for my Instagram. <laughs> um, but yeah, trying to think ahead a little bit too, because I'm like, if I get killed off in one of the buildings the next couple of days, I can use these photos. I feel like it's not technically cheating. I'm just planning ahead. But yeah, I will be diving into Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. I loved Mary by Nat Cassidy. This says, Anna and Reed needed a lucky break. This lighting is so bad, you guys. I'm going to have to, like, turn a little bit. Um, the horrifically complicated birth of their first child has left Anna paralyzed, bitter, and struggling with mobility, with her relationship with Reed, and with resentment for her baby. That's about to change with the words any New Yorker would love to hear, affordable housing lottery. They've won an apartment in the Deptford, one of Manhattan's most revered, river, revered? buildings with beautiful vistas of Central Park and stunning architecture. Reed dismisses disturbing events and Anna's deep unease and paranoia. As the price of living in New York, people are odd, but he can't explain the needle-like bite marks on the baby. I'm in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, that is the plan. I will say the first location that the killer visited was just announced and dun dun dun, it was the lake. Um, I'm so glad that I didn't kill, get killed off the first night because honestly, I probably would have just scrapped this video <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, but I am kind of bummed that it was the lake. I wanted to go to the river this, or hopefully soon, but I guess it works out because it's supposed to rain here all weekend. So I thought getting some pictures at the river, that would have been really cool for this, but is what it is. Anyways, I need to get to these photos um, because I probably have less than an hour before this sprint is over. You might be able to hear the crackling fire in the background. Um, and I need to make some legway into nestlings because I'm hoping to check out of the archery field tomorrow and into a different location um, to start a new book. So we'll see.
place where nature's beauty thrives, where laughter echoes and joy arrives. I hide in shadows binding my time to commit a sinister crime. Where the fears fall and stars appear, I bring forth terror, instilling fear. Where ripples dance and my dark deeds are done, unmask me now before I claim another one. Let's see. I did not even download the graphic. That's gonna be great. Okay, I'll just verbally say it, but there's only one person dying tonight out of like out of the 200 submissions. So great job, everyone. Um, but the killer was at the lake. <laughs> dun dun dun. guys the sprints are over they've been over for a little while um i took my makeup off i'm doing my skincare now um and i just wanted to do a little bit of a check-in on where i'm at with my book um i did make it a decent amount um i would say i'm a little over halfway now so i thought i would let you guys know how i'm feeling about this book and all of that while i do my skincare getting juicy you guys so, so this is giving major rosemary baby vibes you have this couple and i think i said her name wrong in the synopsis i think i said anna her name is anna um and the guy's name is reed and they have a little girl who's like a year old and her name is Charlie. We found out that years ago they had put their name, I don't know how all this works, but like some type of like apartment lottery thing and they put their name in and it didn't happen for them, but now it did. And it's kind of like a bad timing for them because after the birth of their baby, not only did um Anna go through like postpartum depression which triggered um if you guys have been around on my channel I've talked about it I was I, I really went through it after my second kid not to the extent of Anna um hers was um endangering of her child she was found holding a knife over the cradle so that it was a little intense but not only did she go through that but she also was like trying to avoid doing a c-section when she needed a c-section apparently and like a really rare thing happened to her where now she's like in a wheelchair and it's it's just kind of like she's had to learn how to do everything all over again um and she has like physical therapy and stuff that she does and they're hoping that she won't always be in a wheelchair but you know for now this is her new normal that she's having to get used to so now they get this apartment lottery thing however that works and they get to move into this like apartment that's like really high up and it talks about how there's like a courtyard thing that you can like walk out on and there's gargoyles and I just think of like an apartment building in like Gotham City or something <sighs> but anyways there's like creepy neighbors and stuff too but they're like excited because their apartment they were living in was like really run down and they had like a really hard time with it and their neighbor Frank they keep referring to was a big weirdo so they're like excited to get out but she just has this uneasy feeling and it's just like rosemary's baby if you've read or watched that where the woman is having this uneasy feeling about it and the guy's like oh it's fine like it's gonna be great or whatever he is super understanding of her in the wheelchair with steps but ultimately it's almost like his disappointment is reading off him so heavily that like she pressured and feels guilty to say yes 
to get this apartment. So they confirm that they're going to be at this apartment and just eerie stuff just starts happening. And it's almost just like she's trying to tell her husband, he's kind of like brushing it off. And it's not exactly like Rosemary's baby because like, I feel like the guy is going through it too and trying to figure out like what's going on. And he has his own struggles going on that he's like not telling her. So it's kind of like Rosemary's baby because he's like keeping secrets and, <laughs> There's a lot going on. Now the baby's acting weird and it, the baby's become very, very fussy and there's just been really weird things going on. There's also this lady that they've like started talking to and the, the dad is kind of like, I guess, working for her. I wanted to mention her because her name is Camilla and it's so close to Carmilla that I feel like it's kind of a take on like the first vampire. Anyways. I'm enjoying it. I feel like Matt Cassidy is just going to become a favorite of mine and this is making me realize that I need to do three books by Nat Cassidy because I want to reread Mary. I feel like that is a book that upon reread it would go from a four to a five star. So I kind of want to reread that and maybe do a three books by him with this. That the hard part is, is I don't know how many books he has out. I want to say, yeah, he has a short story or a novella coming out in October called Rest Stop. So maybe it'll be a good time too. I know next April is when when the Wolf Comes Home comes out, and I'm excited about that. I've also really wanted to read Dark Matter, um, or human monsters a horror anthology um dark matter presents is um the thing for it but anyways the editor is sadie hartman you know mother horror and then oh and ashley sawyers i've got to get to that one too oh i have so many on my to-do list anyways um this is just really making me see how much i love his writing though and stuff. I just absolutely love the vibes of this. It's so dark and, you know, almost gothic while not being, but it's just so eerie and you just really don't know what to expect. And he's almost doing it in like a Salem's Lot, which Salem's Lot was referenced in this, um, but he's almost doing it like in a Salem's Lot way to where you just, you're really not going to know it's a vampire until like that bang or you know the the clues start adding up and and again just kind of like rosemary's baby where it's like the clues have to like add up to get to somewhere i don't know i am really enjoying myself but i am going to bed now since my skincare is done um but i thought i would check in and i'm hoping to finish this tomorrow we are heading out of town tomorrow and we're going to go to the movies and stuff like I mentioned earlier, but I am hoping to finish this first thing in the morning. I found out today because I was under a rock all day um, that on Instagram and Discord just posted not only like a little like good morning campers, this is what to expect today with like what the photo prompt was and like sprints going on, like letting us just know how our day is going to be as campers. <laughs> but she also, I guess every single day is going to post like a riddle or rhyme that you have to solve to be able to figure out where not to be. So the riddle today was about the lake and that's where the killer ended up at. So if you guess correctly and you get out of that location, keep surviving so it's kind of nice that like we have that to like try to help us give us hints on where the killer is going to go she also mentioned in the live stream to not follow her because she does plan on dying sometime in this readathon so that she could do a photo of her death so but i will check in with you guys tomorrow and we'll see the riddle and see where i need to go next good morning you guys i've made a little bit of progress not a whole lot to really fill you guys in on anything else than what I left off last night. I am officially at part four, so I'm hoping to wrap this up soon so that I can move. Um, I have not seen today's hint yet. I did see the scavenger hunt. Um, she posted a template of like, it's like an actual scavenger hunt, so you have to like find like sticks and rocks and like bigger things or bigger points so like if you can find a bridge or like a trail pathway or you know things like that so I'm just like any other day 
would be perfect but today I'm like this is probably the worst day for me to do a scavenger hunt unfortunately so I don't know if I'm gonna get to that or not but we may still do like some type of like nature trail thing during this readathon if the rain holds off um maybe tomorrow or something if it's not raining I can take the kids to go you know walk a trail or something and maybe do a little bit of the scavenger hunt then just for fun for the video today i'm finally going to get to see beetlejuice beetlejuice and i'm so excited i'm sitting here getting ready so i'm going to listen to nestlings while i get ready i'm trying to decide what the vibe is i'm wearing like a all black outfit and then i have like a white and black over thing like beetlejuice so i'm kind of thinking i should go green um also hence the lighting but I don't know what palette to use <laughs> um, I was a sucker for Beetlejuice makeup and so I have the Melt Cosmetics waiting room which I feel like isn't the vibe today just because I do think I want to go a little green um, but I do have the recently deceased palette from Melt as well so I think this will be the pick for today at least um, and then the So Strange palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. Anyways, this palette is gorgeous too. I'm in my Beetlejuice era right now, so I'm sure I'll get to all three of them. Yeah, I just wanted to check in, let you guys know that I am rechecked into the archery field. I'm hoping to finish nestling so that I can move on to another place. But honestly, with how today's going to go, I need to pick a place that's going to be safe. So I'm going to wait for the hint um before I check in anywhere else because I'm probably going to be there all day <laughs> and I don't want to be killed tonight so yeah I will check in with you guys in a little bit if I finish the book um and where I decide to check in or I will show you guys in the upcoming clips if we're already on the road In a bustling place where people me or daily rituals seem so sweet. I linger quietly out of sight, taking my victim in the dead of night. Along with the laughter or smiles and glee, a shadow hides and that is me. In this plan where many me had planned my strike, swift and discreet. Alley here because I completely forgot. I don't even know where my brain was at. I feel like all I can say is that we are currently moving as I am like editing this, and it, everything was kind of up in the air during this readathon. We were looking at houses, we were starting to pack things up, and kind of just waiting on the okay, you're good to go and move type of ordeal. So my brain has just been scattered, but I never updated you guys on nestlings. I literally talked about it, how I was liking it, the vibes of it. And then the next day I went to see Beetlejuice Beetlejuice finish the book. And then the next day I'm like, today I'm starting. And I never even told you guys what I thought about nestlings. It was a five star. Absolutely loved it. I feel like Maybe I didn't talk too much on it because I thought that I already reviewed it because I feel like in the last clip I talked so much about it. Um, yes, it gives Salem lots like eerie, um, like sink sinking feeling of like that doom sinking almost throughout it. It also has that rosemary baby vibes and all of those things continue throughout. But even the ending I felt like was such a... A nice touch to it like I just really enjoyed it I 
I'm a big Nat Cassidy fan, I have to say. I'm really, really enjoying his work, and this one I just ate up. I, it's probably going to be one of my top contenders for the year of favorite books because it was so good. I enjoyed it so much, and I just felt like I had to include a little clip of that because I can't believe I did it then. Most people guessed correctly it was the mess hall or whatever, um, the place where everybody meets to eat meals. So for me it means I'm safe another night, um, but I do lose another TBR contender. Which means the lake is now out and the mess hall. Today there is the movie watch night. It is at 8 p.m. Eastern, so 7 o'clock Central my time. We're watching Fear Street, the part one, I think it's like the 1994. I actually have seen this one. Um, so I'm kind of glad it's that one because I know I've seen it before, but I needed to refresh my memory on it. But I do hope to watch the other parts this holiday season or this Halloween season because I just still haven't got to them. Besides that, not too much is going on. I'm hoping to like do something campy tonight with the movie watch but just kind of have a chill day. I think the photo prompt is like take a picture with your book and snack so we might pick up s'more stuff but we'll have to do it inside because it's another rainy day. It's just kind of been like a light drizzle all day but we do have a call from the killer. So loud. Where you lay your head where dreams are spun and fears are shed. I enter softly without a sound. In these quarters my deeds are found. In this haven of solitude and peace, my dark intentions never cease. Find me where you feel most secure, for in your refuge I am the lure. All right, well, we know that he's hitting up the cabins tonight. Ugh, I do not have time to get to that book. I'm gonna think about it a little bit longer, but I think I'm going to check into the bonfire before that is taken because one of my biggest goals for this video was to finally read Riley Sager's 2024 release, Middle of the Night. So I really wanna get to this one before the killer hits it up. Um, and since we know that he's going to the cabins tonight, it eases my mind a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. I think I'm gonna check into the bonfire. Um, I was kind of thinking about doing the bathhouse so I could do like skincare and stuff, but maybe that will be tomorrow. Um, the hard part is, is that this is gonna be a physical read for me. So it's a chill day. Let's see if I can make some progress through it, but I do have some editing and stuff like that. I would like to get done too while chilling. I will probably check in, dive into this one and let you guys know what I think. Oh, 
you guys, it is Monday. Um, we did indeed have a chill night last night. We watched uh, Fear Street. It was good. Um, definitely have my critiques, but it's good. It was overall a good movie. Um, I liked the goriness of it, and I like that it does feel like a Fear Street or Goosebumps type movie. Um, I'm excited to see where the series like goes. I forgot so much of this movie, so I definitely needed the rewatch. Um, we made s'mores last night. That was a lot of fun. Although the boys were a little freaked out that it was a flame in the house. Um, I made some progress on Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I'm close to halfway. I'm not gonna lie, it's Dragon. Um, I, I say that, okay, here's the deal. I'm actually enjoying it. I like Riley Sager's writing style. I think the story is interesting enough, um, but I just know that like 90% of people, if not 99% of people, are so disappointed with this book that I just, I feel like I'm physically reading this book without an audiobook for readathon for disappointment. Because if I'm like the 99%, I'm going to be disappointed in how this ends. And I feel like the way it's going, I could see where it could be a little bit more. Um, if you don't know, it says the worst thing to ever happen on Hemlock Circle occurred in Ethan Marsh's backyard. One July night, 10 year old Ethan and his best friend and neighbor, Billy, fell asleep in a tent set up on a manicured lawn in a quiet acquaintance quiet, quaint New Jersey cul-de-sac. In the morning, Ethan woke up alone. During the night, someone had sliced a tent open with a knife and taken Billy. He was never seen again. And now it's 30 years later, Ethan is moving back to his parents' home. They are going to retire in Florida and pretty much just like give him their house. He's going to teach at a local school and he's back in the neighborhood where like this huge traumatic thing happened to him as a kid. So it's already like not really adding up. We learned that he's had a marriage and it's failed because they agreed that they both didn't want kids and then in the marriage she wanted kids and he's just like, that wasn't really for me. I don't feel comfortable um, being in charge of taking care of kids, pretty much. After what happened to Billy, although he was also a kid when Billy, you know, was kidnapped. Anyways, now years later, it's like, I don't wanna give anything like too, too away. I feel like with thrillers though, the hard part is, is the synopsis gives so much away. But it's kind of like the story of Billy's disappearance is coming back up. There's been more evidence found. And so there's like questioning again. And he's like looking at all the neighbors trying to figure out what's going on. And I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of people kind of being introduced. It's reminding me of Desperate Housewife vibes as far as like how the street is set up, how the people act. Everybody acts like they are just perfect, but you know underneath they all have these deep, dark secrets. So it's also reminding me of Megan Miranda's thriller, Such a Quiet Place, I think it was what it was called. And I also said it kind of gave Desperate Housewives um, vibes because of the street and how just everybody presented themselves. And you know that in the end, there's going to be a dark secret. It's probably going to be one of them. So I just don't, ugh, I don't know. Anyways, I say all of this because... Last night, Jess was making hints that there was maybe going to be another, like, just a random, like, attack on another area. But thankfully, we made it through the night and there has not been another attack. But it makes me wonder now, is she going to do that? Is she just going to do, like, a surprise attack on one of the places? I don't know. But we did, in fact, um, get the cabins attacked last night like suspected. Um, and then the killer called again this morning and... In a place where daylight fades to night, where campers' laughters turn to fright, I move with stilt and shadowing grace, striking swiftly with nitrace. Amongst the cheer and friendly faces, I find my change in hidden places. Solve the mystery, uncover the fear before my dark deeds draw you near. I feel like it's they're getting harder to decipher, which is really cool. There's this part where, where campers' laughters turn to fright. We all are thinking it means ghost stories or scary stories around the campfire. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm at the campfire. So it's like I either have to speed run this book and get my ass out of the campfire or the bonfire or I'm going to die tonight. 
um, because I, like everyone else, I think this is where the killer is attacking. So I also, because, ugh, the hard part was, as I thought about setting this one aside, checking out of the bonfire and maybe going to like one of the other locations so that I could jump into one of my other books, especially that has like an audiobook because my weeks are just busy. Um, but now that I know that they're attacking tonight at the bonfire, I'm like, I need to just get my butt in gear and just finish this so that I can check out of it by 7 p.m. my time and hopefully make it into um, probably the bathhouse next. That's what it was. I don't know, something like that. Um, I think it's the one with like the body part in the cover and I have an audiobook that I really wanna get to for that. That is where I'm at. I am about to film other content because it's a busy Monday, so we'll see. I might be dying tonight and I have no photos of me for a good death scene at a campground, so this could be deuces I'm out or I read in the afterlife and maybe finish middle of the night and maybe another contender that I was going to read or I'd have to do a complete another look and die at the campfire tonight, which I think would be cool to die and then be able to post my scene, you know, but I kind of want to be a final girl. So I feel like I just need a skedaddle. So I don't know. I'm going to like try to get my stuff done. I'm watching sprints. Um, but I believe there's like an event going on tonight too. I need to double check, but I think there's something else going on tonight. So I'm just like, I just have to really try to get through this book before this evening. <laughs> So I did in fact finish middle of the night and I, I have thoughts. First of all, I am now checked in to the bathhouse. So, or I think that's what it's called. Anyways, um, because of that, I'm going to do some skincare because you know, we're in the bathhouse now. And since I'm having a chill day, it is always my favorite to do skincare on days like this. Um, I'm going to be using a detox mask from LYS. It's their Think Deep mask. Anyways, middle of the night. So let's review this because I've got to jump into my next book. Um, I think the game night starts like soon. Well, I think I have like another hour or two. I can't remember for sure. Anyways, I finished middle of the night and when people review a book so low and it's like people are mad about this book that I I don't know like my ex expectations were not high for it because of that and I try usually to not be that way because I'm like there's books that I love and there there's actually like books that are notorious for people like hating that I actually like so I usually try to not go into it that with, you know, those thoughts because I'm just like, this could be one of those instances, you know, but I feel like Riley Sager is kind of hit or miss for me anyways, but I think it's just the fact that he is a thriller writer. Like, if you've been on my channel, you know, like, thrillers don't really do it for me that much anymore. Like, I have a really hard time reading just about any thriller because... I don't really get super shocked or surprised by any of the outcomes anymore. Like, I feel like we're getting the same stories over and over again. And I feel like people will pick up a thriller and be like, oh, this is not unique. This is used. But I'm just like, everything has been done. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> um, where with this one, I do have it right here. I feel like I need to be like holding it up, but I do have like that mask on my hands. So it is what it is. I did not plan this out, but I did know I wanted to do some masking. Um, with this book, I always say with Riley Sager, he is one of my favorite thriller writers. And the only reason I say that is because for some reason he has not really a shock factor, but like he always has a way of writing his books to where I always can predict twists that are coming. But it's like he has a hidden twist that always like surprises me not really shocks but like surprises me I'm like oh okay you know and that was my favorite thing about some of his past books I would be reading them I'd be like yeah yeah this is gonna happen and then it would happen I'd be like yeah and then like something else would happen I'm like oh, okay 
you got me there. And maybe I'm just kind of getting used to that now. I don't know. But at the same time, going into this one, I feel like every single or every other chapter had some type of maybe it's this person. Maybe it's this person. Oh, now you're thinking it's this person. Now you're thinking it's this person that I got so exhausted. I was like, I'm shutting my brain off. I'm just going to read. I'm going to go with the flow. And I just stopped guessing. I was like, I don't even, I don't even care at this point who it is. Like, I feel like it could literally be anybody at this point. Like we've put a target on everyone's back. And that's just kind of how it felt. It also feels so long and it is like 360 ish pages. So it's almost a 400 page book, which I feel like is super unnecessary for this story. The characters, I didn't hate the characters. I wouldn't say they're super, like, they're not like loved characters. They're not super likable, but like at the same time, they're just, it is what it is. I didn't really find any like major critiques. I feel like like some people are. Um, I feel like for a thriller, I usually don't get attached to any characters. So I was just fine with what we had. Um... And here's the deal. I didn't hate this read. I feel like so many people are really, really hating this book. I didn't hate it. I actually enjoyed the read as far as a thriller goes. And it's because thrillers disappoint me so much these days that I never really look forward to reading them. Where with his, now don't get me wrong, I get some of his writing. Some of the writing style is like a little questionable. Holding your breath and then letting it come out, like those lines. Um, I think there's also different things that are said that I'm just like, okay, you know? Um, but besides that, as far as the thriller and the story progresses, I actually didn't mind it. Like it was still entertaining. Um, I liked the coming of age aspect of it because I love coming of age stories. So maybe that's kind of what won me over too. Um, I love that it felt a little bit like a ghost story, although that is the major thing people are upset about, that this is not paranormal. This is not a ghost story. So you might go into it thinking that, um, but a lot of people have gotten mad about it, but it literally on Goodreads, this book is not marketed. I, I get, on Goodreads, the book isn't marketed as a paranormal ghost story, although the synopsis can be a little misleading. Um, the synopsis is misleading in general, I would say. Um, I think just going into it knowing that this is about a boy who goes missing and was in a tent with his friend and now 30 years later they're trying to figure out what is going or what happened his remains were found and there's so many characters in the street that are brought in to the story that you're constantly guessing and second guessing who it is um there's also the hawthorne institute that is like two miles through the woods and nobody knows what anybody did at this institute back in the day um it almost brings in like occult vibes and just very questionable things. I liked all those aspects. I felt like the story in itself was pretty enjoyable. Writing wise, maybe not so much. I do agree with people when they say it kind of feels like he, an idea sparked. I almost thought like maybe he watched Stranger Things and got inspired because of the Hawkins like labs or whatever to do the Hawthorne Institute. And then on top of that, like, you know, what is it? Will, Will, Will Byers, is that his name? Goes, you know, goes missing. So it's like this kid goes missing and, um, but at the same time, it's not sci-fi. It's not anything like that either. It's just a, it's just a thriller. It's just like a whodunit type of situation. And I don't know, like I, I just enjoyed the ride. I liked the different aspects it was throwing at us and the coming of age story and where they were all at now. And, I liked a lot of that. Again, writing could be better. I kind of just felt like he got inspired by the the main plot and then just like wrote as he went and it was just like very just thrown together and every other chapter you, we have to make somebody else look suspicious type of ordeal. With that being said, I was not a big fan of the ending either. Um, I It was... It literally does feel like he just kind of copped out the ending. Like he just didn't want to commit to anything bigger. So he just was like, it's just going to be this. 
and so I can see where a lot of people are disappointed. But for me too, I'm not, I don't think I'm as disappointed just because this is a thriller, not a horror. If it was a horror, I would have been like, what? You could have went big, like go big or go home situation. With this being a thriller, it just feels a lot more of a domestic thriller. So yeah, I think that's my critiques. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be, but it is an average thriller. It's not super unique. Although I do think that there is elements and scenes in this that were quite enjoyable to read. Um, there's a scene with the mausoleum and it was pretty cool. Kids kind of like getting stuck in it and um, about to get like busted or caught like on private property type of ordeal. So I think scenes like that just make it really interesting knowing that this Hawthorne Institute is behind their houses in the woods and there's a big fall, like a waterfall type of ordeal by it with a lake. And um, I think all of those aspects really bring the story together, kind of still having that suburban vibe too with like Desperate Housewife vibes. Um, I feel like there's a lot of elements with this that I really enjoyed, but um, in the end, the story does wrap up and fall short for me as well. So I understand why people are upset, but I do say if you are a thriller reader and you absolutely love thrillers, I don't think that you're going to like, I would not recommend this, but I would also just say don't expect to be blown away or super shocked by anything. Um, anyways, I think I would land at a three with it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great but it's what it is. Anyways, I am now in the bathhouse and I am hoping hoping I have an audiobook for the book Katie that I am buddy reading with some friends from In the Void Book Club and it's a book by Michael McDowell, my first book by Michael McDowell, so I'm super excited. Um I still have not gotten a physical copy, but this fit perfectly for the bathhouse prompt because the cover is literally just her hand holding a hammer. <laughs> Um, this is a slasher, so I'm super excited to get into this. I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I finish masking, get some chores done. I have some laundry to catch up on. I have some more progress in here to make. So I feel like my goal for the rest of this video is just going to be checking into places, reading a book, and checking out because I would like to get in two more books. So Katie and at least one other book. I'm hoping to finish Katie either tonight or tomorrow morning and then check into my last location and really like set my mind to it and finish out another book so that I will have, I think, four books for this video. So yeah, that is the plan and I will see you guys soon with my thoughts on In a place where daylight fades tonight, where campers' laughters turn to fright, I move with stealth and shadowing grace, striking swiftly with nitrace. Amongst the cheer and friendly faces, I find my change in hidden places. Solve the mystery, uncover the fear before my dark deeds draw you near. Valencourt Audiobooks presents Katie, written by Michael McDowell, performed by Kimberly M. Weatherell. Money, you think, is the sole motive to deception and devilry in this world. How much money did the devil make by gulling Eve? Melville, the Confidence Man. Prologue. On Christmas Eve of 1863, at the height of the conflict between the northern states and the southern, a nine-year-old girl called Katie Slate sat before the hearth in a set of poor tenement rooms in Philadelphia. She was dressing her doll with scraps of gauze, lace, and silver cloth, incongruously rich materials in that shabby, dim interior. Future Alley here because the end of this readathon was a mess for me. We had gotten the okay on moving and um, started packing things, and I did finish out my readathon, but I did not film anything. I was so overwhelmed, everything was all over the place, and I was just, I was having a really hard time. We also had like, or I had like girls' night and stuff, so. I just felt like I couldn't find the time to sit down and film. Um, so here's what happened. I started Katie and then I did like my bathhouse skincare and whatever, started Katie, had kind of a relaxing day. And I was like, 
I'm liking this, but I, I'm currently reading Katie as a buddy read. So I was like, I don't want to rush this for a readathon. I want to savor this and maybe have it for October too. So I started it. I got a few chapters in and I paused it and I checked out of the bathhouse and I went into hiking trail. Sorry, my iPad is going to make me look blue. I checked into the hiking trail and then I went to bed. And what happened? I went to bed so early because I was so tired from everything that's been going on. But I wake up to seeing that images were done at game night. I missed game night. So I don't really know how it went down, what happened, but I do know that not only did the killer get one location, but two during game night, and then another one during the night. And one of them was the bathhouse that I had just checked out of. I don't know how I'm safe. I literally was just like, oh my gosh, my name's gonna be on the graveyard list. It wasn't, I'm still good to go. So I was checked into the hiking trail and I decided to go ahead and start hiking trail pick, which is Karen Slaughter Indelible and go on a little hike that morning. And um, I didn't really get to like any other prompts and stuff. Again, it's just been super hard with moving and I feel like it kind of like ruined my tail end of this readathon. But I did fly through this because I did have the audiobook through Hoopla, so I was able to get through it rather quick because Jess let it slip with the announcement of the last reading sprints for the readathon that all locations were going to be back up. So if you missed any, you could go back to them and read. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buckle down. And if anything, if I'm not, you know, completing all the prompts or whatever, at least I can finish this book and maybe another one since I didn't finish Katie. So I did finish this one. I can't really say too much about it. I think I landed at a three star with it. Um, this is like the fourth or fifth book. Um, in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. It's Grant County and then it goes into pretty much another series that follows the main girl in this. So I am just been currently trying to get through the Grant County series, but I think I needed the break for a while because going back into this now, I rather enjoyed it. Um, the case for this one is two armed men enter the police station in tiny Hartsdale, Georgia and open fire. When the shooting stops, an officer is dead, police chief Jeffrey Tolver is seriously wounded, and the survivors, including a ca class of grade school children and medical examiner Sarah Linton, Jeffrey and Sarah are like the main characters of this, are held hostage in a tense standoff they could er that could erupt at any moment into more blood letting. With her ex-husband on the threshold of death, Sarah must search for answers and escape in the memories of the time at the start of the relationship when another brutal shocking crime shattered their small town world. So it is kind of like a crime fiction series. Um, you kind of have to follow along to know like their background stories and everything about them. But being crime fiction, there's like a new crime that happens at the beginning of each of these books. So it's kind of like a standalone in a sense, but you do have to kind of follow along the series to know um, about Sarah and Jeffrey and their past and this one does go down memory lane It kind of goes back and forth like one chapter will be like flashback to when they first started dating the next chapter will be like the present they're like What's going on right now? Um, with this current crime and hostage hostage situation. I kind of had a fun time with this It's much better than the last I think two in the series I read they just kind of started teetering off for me and that's why I took such a long break from these. But now I'm excited to jump into the next one and I think, let me look on Goodreads, but I think I'm rather close in finishing Grant County. Yeah, this was book four. Yeah, I have two more left before I go into Will Trent. That's what it's called, the Will Trent series. And that's the series I think she's still currently writing on. So I'm excited to follow Sarah into that. And I've heard the Will Trent series is even better than Grant County. So that's kind of why I'm like sticking to it as well. So it was a girls night. Um, and then I came home to see that they were finishing up sprints and doing another sprint. So I jumped in on the last sprint and started my late pick. 
I did check into the lake and then we got a message, the last message from the killer on where he's gonna go. And honestly, I feel like he could literally hit up any location. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna check in at the lake. This is a short one I can get through on a sprint and then a little bed time reading, you know? So I did read The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, and this is such a confusing read that I, the next morning, had to listen to a podcast that he was on to kind of get his thoughts and to see like where his brain was going with it. He said that he took a lot of himself from his childhood into this book, and it's kind of like the point of view of a child, so you're kind of left in the dark or you're just getting his point of view, you're not getting an adult point of view that could be like, okay, this is what's going on right now. But it's seeing it through a kid's eyes, so it kind of blurs it a little bit. And there's so many questions up in the air, it's almost like a unreliable point of view. It takes place in England. A middle-aged man returns to his childhood home to attend a funeral. Although the house he lived in is long gone. He is drawn to the farm at the end of the road where when he was seven he encountered the most remarkable girl Letty Hemstock and her mother and grandmother. He hasn't thought of Letty in decades and yet as he sits by the pond, a pond that she claimed was an ocean, behind the ramshackle old farmhouse, the unremembered past comes flooding back. And it is a past too strange, too frightening, too dangerous to have happened to anyone let alone a small boy. 40 years earlier, a man, unalived himself, in a stolen car at this farm at the end of the road. Like a fuse on a firework, his death lit a touch paper and resonated in unimaginable ways. The darkness was unleashed, something scary and thoroughly incomprehensible to a little boy. And Letty, magical, comforting, wise beyond her years, promised to protect him no matter what. It is heartbreaking. I feel like it is, I feel like it touches on grief in a, in a way of just kind of like traumatic experiences, um, but also kind of like that dissociation of trying to navigate a traumatic childhood and trying to put the pieces together with the help of others, um, of him trying to replay the story of his childhood. And it's Neil Gaiman, so it's like gonna be weird and eerie and creepy and I didn't really expect less from him. I did land at four stars with this one which concluded my readathon and throughout the night I did survive. Um, locations were hit but not the lake so I did survive this time and I feel like I barely missed it again because I'm pretty sure one of the locations that were hit was the hiking trail. So if I would have finished my Karen Slaughter book and said I'm going to bed and left it at that, I would have been cut. Um, so me pushing through and reading one more for the lake, checking in at the lake saved me and I am officially a final girl. <laughs> I had so much fun with the readathon. Thank you again to Jess. Such a fun time. Hopefully this vlog isn't like too all over the place. I'm gonna try to make it enjoyable for you guys, but I know this last day was just kind of a womp 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 type of filming because I just kind of had to just throw this together to wrap it up, but I'm hoping to be a lot more present and better in my upcoming videos with us now being moved in. The packing process is starting. We have just a little bit more to move in. Um, so in my upcoming vlogs, it'll be hopefully a little bit better. Not so overwhelming like it was at that time with us finally being in here and like, I can start setting up my office and getting everything going so that my vlogs and content are a little bit more regular and like not so all over the place. So if I'm telling this up correct, I read Nestlings by Nat Cassidy and gave it five stars. Um, and that was at the Archery Field. I then went to the Bonfire and read Middle of the Night by Riley Saker, which I gave three stars, I believe. I went to the Bath House and started Katie, but didn't finish it and checked out because I wanted to save that book. I went to the Hiking Trail and read Indelible by Karen Slaughter, gave it three stars. And lastly, The Lake, where I read The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman and gave it four stars. So overall, I read 
four books in total, but I did read a little bit of a fifth book. I feel like that was honestly a lot for like a five day readathon and also with the high stakes of like trying to hurry and check into different locations and to mark off different locations. Um, I had a fun time with it and I hope that uh, the killer comes back next year so that we can do this all over again and maybe I can invest more time and energy into those five days. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you went to summer camp and tried to survive this year, please let me know so I can go check out your video or you can let me know down below in the comments what you read, if you survived, um, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.